looks like I've do I have sound or you better turn your computer's sound down? We're gonna have an echo. I've already turned it off. You've already turned it off? Alrighty, okay, so it looks like everything is all good to go on our end. So, hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also, live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So, if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and you'd like to see it put together live, send me a message today. Alright, back here again tonight. It's been, been a little while. I've been up to a bit of stuff in the background, but. Anyway, I'm, I'm back here tonight. So tonight we're going to be building this very, very aesthetically pleasing NZXT H5 flow case. And we're going to be putting a Ryzen 5 7600 in it, a ASUS Prime B650M-A Wi-Fi 2. Got a one terabyte NVMe SSD there from Adata. We have a 6,000 megahertz kit of RAM there from Corsair. We have the Gigabyte Aero RTX 4060 Ti graphics, and we've got a Gamax Rampage power supply there. All white, all white cables. We've got the aforementioned NZXT H5 flow case, and we've got a, oh, there goes my SSD. We've also got a Deepcool LS520 all-in-one liquid cooler. So these are good little coolers. They've got a five-year warranty on the pump and they don't have the five year warranty price which is nice so yeah good good little build here tonight um so charlie's just local so he's going to be able to pick this one up tomorrow provided we don't have any dramas bloody dramas don't you love dramas everyone loves dramas all righty so let's get stuck right into it Got our Wi-Fi antenna there. Don't forget that. And inside the box here we get our motherboard. And we can remove that bit of cardboard there. We get some SATA cables, some M2 offsets and screws, and our rear I/O shield. Oh, and look at this. We get some. We get some. We get some paper like it's like it's 1999 again. Hey, Yay. look at this. We got a we got a user guide. Wow. Motherboard layout. Oh, fancy. And ASUS web storage. Oh, we can we can store our stuff with ASUS if we want. Definitely not an invasion of privacy or anything like that. Oh, we got an interactive CD ROM. <laughs> ha ha. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so our motherboard here. So this is the glue that holds everything together. And it might sound like a super important part, but you don't have to spend ridiculous amounts on a motherboard to get a reasonable quality motherboard with good features. Okay, now motherboards can go right up in price. Like you can spend, even for a consumer PC, you can spend over $1,200 on an absolute top spec motherboard. Now, do you get that extra $1,000 worth of performance from compared to like say a $200 motherboard? Absolutely not. Do you get some more features? Yeah, sure. Um, is, is, it, is it, you know, is it a bigger board? Is it fancier? Does it look nicer? Yeah, yeah, it does, has all that. It'll be freaking have like a copper a back plate on it to protect all this stuff there, but you don't need that. <laughs> this is this is how they this is how they sell things, right? You know, the sales team sits down and be like, right, we need to make a board. It's got this and this and this and this and this, and we're gonna sell it for a thousand dollars. All right. Anyway, enough enough rambling on there off on a tangent. So we got uh, 12 pins of CPU power. We've got our AM5 socket there. Nice to Got four slots for our RAM. So it's dual channel memory over four slots. We've got a couple of RGB headers. So two five volt headers up there. 
we've got our ATX power here, our 24 pin power, the main power for our motherboard. We've got our USB 3 header, we've got our USB C header. We have our front panel connectors plus post beep speaker if you want to install that. We have four SATA ports down the bottom there, two USB 2s, COM port header, a SPIDIF header, two more RGB headers, one 12 volt and one 5 volt, two more fan headers, and our, um, our front panel audio. These little gold capacitors down there, that's your audio capacitors. It's always down here in the bottom corner. And so, what else haven't I pointed out? It's a sneaky fan header around there, which brings the total to five. So one, two, three, four, five fan headers. So, it's generally fine. Um, you might need a fan controller or a splitter cable or something like that if you're wanting to run more than five fans so just consider that if you want to buy this motherboard okay well let's install both of the offsets even though I've only got one M2 drive and so I'll leave the top slot vacant just because it's easier to install another M2 drive in the top slot because the graphics card will sort of make it a bit awkward to get at the bottom slot. Okay. Alrighty, so here's our SSD. So it comes like this, you can see the, the NAND flash on it and then it comes with this little heat sink here so you gotta install your own heat sink on this drive so just be aware of that oh I broke it no oh, I dropped the SSD already dropped it on the floor before so oh, what's gonna happen no, I mean, you have to drop an SSD pretty hard to like sort of damage it. Um, unlike a hard drive, these these things have no moving parts, so it's a little bit sort of you've got to go out of your way to sort of damage one. If you just drop it, it's not a problem. However, a hard drive, if you drop one of them, yes, definitely can be a problem. They have moving parts, and they are they have a lot of. Um, intricate little tiny pieces inside them. Doesn't take a lot to damage them. A friend of mine who works in works in tech, um, he was he was dealing with he was dealing with a customer that is like security camera installs and he had like a heap of hard drives and the customer started chucking them into his car because he because he said yeah I'll um I'll erase the drives for you and, and bring them back and reinstall them and stuff like that and the customer started chucking them in like the back of his ute and he's like bro you've just destroyed those hard drives he's like what are you talking about uh yeah <laughs> and sure enough they were all fucked <laughs> Uh, you just gotta laugh. Okay, so our RAM now. So this is DDR5 RAM. All of the AM5 platform runs on DDR5. So you have to upgrade to DDR5 if you get AM5. With Intel 12th, 13th and 14th gen, you have the option of DDR4 or DDR5. Which I think is good because I think that there's still, um, I don't, I don't think that there's too much wrong with the performance of DDR4, especially, um, especially on the lower end. 
like I still don't think there's a huge a huge problem with it. Um, I've still got DDR4 in my personal. Not too not too concerned. DDR5 is still very expensive in my opinion, so I'm not I'm not personally going to um, going to upgrade anytime soon. Plus, I'd need to buy a new motherboard and stuff, which would be a bit of a pain. But yeah, from a performance perspective, a lot of people will be completely fine with with DDR4 and stuff like that. Um, some people talk about future proofing and. Yeah, <laughs> like I tell people, that's a bit of a it's a bit of a sales marketing term to you know get you to buy you know more expensive hardware than what you really need because there's no such thing as future proof, right? Like, come on, all the time, what what you think of as staying ahead of the curve isn't really staying ahead of the curve. They're already working on. The next thing so my advice to pretty much anyone is to buy a system that meets your needs at the time that you buy it and don't worry too much about you know don't worry about five years down the track because realistically if you're someone who, want, who wants to buy a new PC um, it's kind of like buying a new car right the economic equation is is kind of similar so if you buy if you're a new car buyer it makes sense to sell your new car usually three maybe five years after you get it so you retain as much of the value as you can so then you can put that towards your next new car and so that's how that's how a lot of people sort of roll if not they just get like the novated lease thing but for people who buy buy a new car um, and they you know want to keep up to date they'll go and buy another car and the key thing is you don't hold on to the system but like longer than a certain period of time because the value just drops, right? Like you've all heard about tech, you know, losing value and stuff like that. There's like I think there's a oh, there's like several memes about this, right? But at the end of the day, yeah, don't <laughs> Don't spend more than what more than what you need for your own needs at that time because you might very well end up spending a lot more for something that you really don't need. And by the time you do need it, you'll be up for a new system anyway. So just just consider that. Most PC places won't won't say that to you because they always want to sell you like more expensive shit to make more money and stuff like that. Oh well, yeah, you hear people talk about future proofing and stuff. You can pretty much guarantee that they're trying to sell you something, or they don't really know what they're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mad Warrior. How you going? Good to have you with us here on a Saturday night, generally a bit quieter on Saturday nights, plus I haven't streamed for freaking ages, by now, Okay, so now we've got our radiator to sort out. Okay, so Intel, Intel, everyone, everyone, AMD. Okay. So you get Threadripper and AM4 slash 5 bolts here.
<laughs> Ladiol says, made me hungry with that thumbnail. Hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, Ladiol, how you going? Good to have you with us. Hunter Fly wants to know, do you stream every PC? Everyone that's built by Tim, yes. Yes. Yeah, I live stream them all, so... Unless it's a mobile call. If it's a mobile call and I'm assembling a PC at a customer's house, obviously I don't stream that. Um, there might there might be some random ones in there where like it's a um, like a priority build. Someone wants the PC like the same day or something like that, and I, and they pay a bit extra, and I've got to like kind of drop what I'm doing and get the get the PC done for them. Um, yeah, then then that might not that might not get a live stream. So yeah, you need to remove the standard bracket here with the AMD chips in this cooler. They give you these little little There we go. So sometimes people ask me about thermal paste. There's thermal paste pre-applied on this cooler, and realistically, that's that's all that you need. There are there are companies that sell um, like high performance thermal paste and stuff like that, but you really realistically you don't need it. Okay, it doesn't make any like big difference. You know. People think that oh this will make like this will mean my computer will run like ten degrees cooler. No, no, about maybe yeah maybe a tenth of that. That's what you're talking about. So like a degree difference. And then you'll spend like fifty bucks for the little tube of it. Never gonna never gonna push that on people, eh? That's just an absolute waste Unless of money. They're adamant. Yeah, if, if they come to me and they're like, oh, I have to have thermal grizzly paste and blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, yeah, no worries. But I'll normally tell them, I'll be like, bro, you don't need that. Just, you know, put that towards another game or put that towards more storage or something a bit more practical because you're not going to notice any difference. If I put the good thermal paste on it and you have it, you won't know any difference compared to if I didn't put the good thermal paste on it and just use the standard one. Because it's only going to be maybe a degree, if that, difference in terms of how cold it runs. So yeah. The only time that that really matters, like that one degree and stuff, is if you're like an overclocker and you're, you're pushing the CPU beyond its normal capabilities and you're trying to get it up to the fastest possible speed you have because this is like it's like a game it's you know it's like a challenge right for nerds and so if you if you got that then yeah sure you know get the get the high high performance give you these little clips around the hoses I don't really I don't really think they're necessary I don't think lots of things are necessary do I next I'll be telling you seat belts aren't necessary you know driver's licenses aren't necessary because if you're traveling you don't need a driver's license uh, any of you guys any of you guys heard of sovereign citizens Like, there's a sob sit watching. <laughs> I don't know if they watch content like this. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. The funniest ones is like when they try it in Australia. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, sovereign citizens. This is this is hilarious. Like I didn't I didn't even know about this until like a couple of years ago. There are these people, like, stems from, like, you know, like, the libertarians in America, like the, you know, you've seen the flag, don't tread on me, the, the rattlesnake thing, 
and they just they're like they're like we don't want any government interference we don't want a big government coming down and all that kind of stuff well there's an extension of that they they think they think that things like they don't need a driver's license if they're not working in commerce and then they they don't need a driver's license they don't need a number plate sometimes they put fake number plates on their cars and then they argue with the police and usually get end up getting arrested and so you can watch all these funny videos on the internet of people trying all this pseudo legal crap with the cops on the side of the road and then they get arrested for like obstruction of justice with the police or like refusing a lawful order or, or some some crap like that and then they get pulled out of the car and they usually start screaming and carrying on it, it's 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 crazy like you would but yeah and and there's there are companies out there that sell them like fake number plates and all this stuff to say and they actually pay money for it because it's like they think that if they just pay the money they can get out of like paying for registration and having a driver's license and all this but yeah they all find out very painfully at the side of the road that yeah that doesn't work like that if you drive on public road you need a driver's license now I didn't I didn't think anyone need anyone needed to be reminded of that. <laughs> Weren't you ever a kid? Didn't you ever like get a driver's license like when you were 17 or whatever? You're a I mean the whole time since I was 17 years old, that's 19 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Have I met any? met any? No, I haven't met any. No. But he probably would like to. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to meet one. I just, I, if they're in Australia, I just want to know why they think that this stuff from America can help them in Australia. Like, I'm not even trying to be rude. I'm just, I'm, I'm literally just perplexed. Like. Come on, man! Like in Australia, we got we got less rights than the Americans have, right? <laughs> on on paper, like we're freaking subjects here. You know, we got a king and all that. The Americans they kicked out the kings and queens. They got rid of all that. They got they got their own system there, which is pretty much what the rest of the Western world runs like. It's just the kings and the queens. Are like, please don't leave our empire. We'll let you do whatever you want. <laughs> Yeah, because if not, that, that, that'll just make them weaker and less powerful. So they're like, oh shit, shit, please don't rebel like the Americans. Please don't kick us out and form your own constitution and blah, blah, blah. They are interesting. They are interesting. Yeah, oh man. I honestly, I would, that, that would be, the, if they're in Australia, that'd be the first thing I'd ask them is, why, why, why do you think this would work, man? Seriously. What are you doing? Like, come on, like, like, maybe in America, maybe it's a little bit more, like, it's not as crazy to believe, I guess. In America, they call themselves, like, they call themselves Moorish citizens, or they call themselves American state nationals. And... The Moorish citizens are more, more of a, um... Yeah, yeah, it it is, but it's also it also in, it encompasses the whole sovereign citizen right to travel crap that they that they use. Sovereign citizens. If you look up the ones from Australia, oh man, the cops do not. They do not take kindly to no, this we, nonsense. We have no nonsense. Police. They don't. The, yeah. the cops in America are so so polite and patient. They they talk to these guys for like 10, 15 minutes before anything. The cops over here, they're they just like, like they're just like, nah. If you do not, not provide your driver's license, you'll be placed under arrest. Provide your driver's license now. 
No, no, I don't need a driver's license. You are under arrest. Open the door now. We'll be, we will remove your window. <laughs> yeah, in, insane. Insane. I couldn't believe it. So these fans daisy chain up, so just got one cable in one end and the RGB on the pump actually plugs in to one of these fans here. So then it's just this cable here, we have an extension if we need it, that powers our fans and all the RGB. The only to the CPU header directly. All right, so that is all done. We are ready to turn our attention to the case and putting everything together. Okay, so these H5 cases, I've got to say, I've, I've, I've been a long time, I've actually been a long time hater of NZXT and it's not it is it is because of anything case particular design. it was their old case design I love them don't get me wrong I love their new ones they're they're excellent right there's nothing wrong with their new ones the old ones were just a crappy design there was multiple crappy oh, things about them yeah. and um, yeah basically the main thing was you could only put a 120 millimeter radiator to the top. So if you wanted a 240, you had to mount it to the front. But yeah, there was, it was just not the most ideal like arrangement for the case. What's up? Worcestershire, like the sauce. <laughs> yeah, like the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> That's legit. They have that in England as well. Well, that word. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm saying. The Worc Worcestershire sauce is 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 like traditional English stuff. Probably multiple towns named after it. I bet there's oh, multiple streets. Tell us all about it. <laughs> so I'm just changing a couple of these little offset pieces here that the, the motherboard screws into. So these are really important because they keep the back of the board and all these bits of metal from making contact with the chassis. So really, really important pieces. Um, so go back, go back in time, um, about 25 years ago, had me, I was what, probably like 11 turning 12 or something like that. I, I went and I, I used, like it, as a kid, I'd build myself a new computer like every couple of years, right? Like, like a normal kid, right? What, what I call normal. Um, <laughs> and, and so... I was really, really keen. I was so keen on my new PC. I, all my stuff arrived from eBay and I bought it upstairs and, and I put it on the table and like the dinner table and my parents are like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is my new PC. I'm putting it together, blah, 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 blah. And that I, the, the case didn't have any of these offsets installed. I was so keen that I screwed the motherboard directly into the case, turned it on, and yeah. So yeah, I've made all those mistakes and stuff when I was when I was a kid, basically, and now I can tell you about them and laugh about them now. Okay, so around the back here, it's it's pretty, and it's. 
these little wire ties and stuff like that. Um, if something really needs to be tied, we can use a plastic zip tie. But in general, don't want to tie down the cables too crazy back here because as soon as you have a problem, you got to cut it all out and it's it's really annoying. If you spend a lot of time manicuring the cables out the back of your PC, I guarantee, well, for, for like 99% of people, as soon as you have a part that fails and you have to cut out those 20 cable ties and stuff, then you, you won't want to put them all back together. Especially if you, you end up cutting a cable when you're trying to cut out the 20 cable ties, that'll, that'll really show you. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there you go. So what do we get in the little H-series box? We get our, get our bolts. We got all these, all these individually bagged bolts. How, how good's that? <laughs> we got some little, little cable ties there if we need them. What's that, like 12 or something? Okay. Alright, so what do we got what do we got to deal with? Hey, what have we got to deal with? Okay, so we got looks like we got a looks like we got a splitter. So we got a splitter for, for some of these fans. This fan at the back is an RGB. Oh, really? No. Ooh, that's a bit shit. What do you reckon? We give Charlie a, a an RGB fan? I think so. I think we can. I'm keeping the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this fan, this fan here, yeah, no, no RGB. This one here has RGB. Okay, so So I've got to hook this fan up through the through the chain of fans that's on the radiator, it's the same style of fan and it uses its own connection. I normally hate proprietary connections but I quite like this deep cool one, it's really really good. So if you don't know, I've probably mentioned this a few times, deep cool, deep cool spent, I think it was like, I think it was like two and a half billion dollars on a new state of the art production facility and that's not two and a half billion dollars worth of stuff in America or Australia this is two and a half billion so they, that's a considerable investment so deep cool had kind of like cheaper like crappier products not crappier but like they weren't going for the for the high end of the market um, they were pretty much aiming at the budget end of the market. Now they're aiming at the mid range of the market to the to the um to the top range. I would say sort of mid to mid high. They don't I haven't I haven't seen a deep cool cooler with a digital screen on the on the pump block yet. 
Yeah, maybe maybe when I see that, we'll actually have some evidence of them actually being, you know, going after that premium market. I feel like I feel like they've got the opportunity to do that, if you know what I mean, with this new facility. To give you not to give you an example of what I'm talking about, these LS520 and the LS and LT720s, um, they they actually they're actually the new deep cool coolers that they that they actually put out once they opened their new facility. So these coolers are tied to that new facility that they've got. And sorry, a bit of a bit of plastic on there. Yeah. Um, ah, that must be Charlie. Hey, Charlie. How you going? Hey, George. How you going? But yeah. Anyway, keep cool, right? They're old AIO coolers. They were sort of bargain basement ones. The maximum warranty you could get on them was one year. And then they open their new facility, drop these new coolers. Now they're offering five year warranties on them. Like, I mean, as a business, they're like everyone else around you. You think, oh, deep cool, they're like, they've got all the crap. And then they come out and they're just like, here you go, guys. High performance, looks great, long warranty. Okay, so our Game Max Rampage power supplies. These are really, really good power supplies. They're not a familiar brand. They are from China. However, the internals of them, I've looked at the, the detailed specifications of these units, and they're, they're quite good quality. All the capacitors and everything inside them are good. It comes with a standard warranty. Um, happy days really gold efficiency and yeah it's got it it's got it and yeah these nice flat white cables will will look look for goods in this case and so these these power supplies here 750 watt all white cables ATX3 ready to go um, they're about about 150 Aussie dollars, so pretty pretty good value realistically. I think this is I think this is like their um, this is sort of like their introduction to the Australian market, so they've got some good good deals on stuff because they want people to try their try their stuff out. Okay, so we only need we only need the one. PCIe cable. This can go in our bag because we got this. See, look, they're they're definitely aiming for like a a be a more premium product. You got this little little bag for your extra extra cables and stuff like that. You don't get that on on cheap bargain basement power supplies. Just need the one for our CPU. And is there any other? I mean, I'll plug in. I'll plug in one SATA. Not that we like technically need it or anything like that. I'll just plug it in, just in case it's needed in the future. And then the rest of these cables, I can go back in the bag. Power cable can go in the bag. Oh, we got some. We got some gloves. Don't know why you need. The gloves. Oh, and look at this! You get a screwdriver. You get some, get some Velcro ties, and you get a little, little Game Max plate there. Look at this! They're, they're definitely. This is this is proof that they're definitely. Look at this little, little metal badge there. I quite like it. Good stuff, guys. Okay, so these are the cables that we need for this build. 
power supplies get mounted with the the fan down because it's a uh, it's good to have them as an independent system that's not impacted by the heat in the rest of the case because power supplies will um, will shut themselves off um, if they get too hot and they'll shut themselves off at temperatures below what the rest of the PC can handle so if you if you have the power supply sort of drawing heat out from drawing air from within the case you could end up with a situation where you're just gaming or doing whatever and your computer will just turn off it back on after it turns off and nothing will happen you'll just get a dead system and then you'll start to freak out you'll think that your, your PC's ruined and something bad's happened and stuff and then 10 minutes later once it cools down it will turn back on again for you and you'll realize oh okay it's it's all good but that's that's kind of how it works if a power supply shorts out or gets too hot and overheats it will it will stay in a in a position where it won't turn back on for a short period of time so you need to leave it and then come back to it okay so I'll put the graphics card down there I'll put this box of goodies down here as well okay well let's get the board in the case and let's get this other fan hooked up to these okay so the the loops actually going to start with this fan on the back here so what that what that means is we're going to plug in oh look just in case I'm short on length for whatever reason I'll plug in the extension cable All right, so that plugs in just there. This cable kind of runs down there and plugs into the motherboard. So what we have to do, we have to mount mount this, we have to plug this cable into the, the spare little outlet there on that other fan. So a little bit of, a little bit of like delicate work. Installed the rear IO shield. Definitely want to do that. And got these little pieces here. Just sort of bend them up a little bit just to make sure you don't end up sticking those metal things into the USB ports on your um, on your motherboard. So the audio outputs will always be at the bottom, so you can use that as a guide. Um, okay. Okay, so before we go too far with the radiator, I want to make sure we get everything plugged in at the top here that we want to get plugged in, plus our bolts screwed in. Because once we mount this radiator, we're not going to be able to get at much of this stuff.
So there's two different, there's two bolts that are roughly the same size and they have slightly different thread pitch. And what a, don't know what a thread pitch is. It's like, you know, the thread on a screw, it's sort of how thick and thin that piece is. And so if you've got, if you've got a screw that's got like a small thread, um, thread width, you try to put that into a bigger hole and it sort of it sort of some feels like it screws down a little bit but it's loose and yeah you don't want that you want to make sure you've got the got the um got the screws with the correct thread pitch screwed into your case because if not they'll fall out over time so yes i've had some I've had some shockers. I've accidentally shipped a PC to someone with the wrong thread pitch bolts in them and stuff and had to get it had to get it fixed and whatnot. Okay. So when you're mounting a radiator, you will normally have four bolts per fan. Now, if you're trying to position it and you end up covering up some of those bolts, don't freak out too much. Um, in general, if as long as you've got as long as you've got like four to six bolts, it's going to be fine. The others, if the if the metal covers them up when you've got it in the position that you want, don't freak out and be like, "Oh no, I can't, I can't mount it like this. It's got to be like two centimeters further that way." Because even though it looks like shit now, I've got to screw in all those screws. No, as long as you've got, as long as you got all four corners and they're 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 screwed in properly, it's not going to fall out. The radiator is not like some super heavy component. It's, you know, what, 500 grams or something? And so yeah, I'd never sacrifice the position of the radiator and make it look all wonky or, or weird or whatever for the sake of uh, an extra bolt. Eight of the of the holes free, so I can just go and screw all eight in. Oh. So I can tell that the drill bit. A little bit hard to screw some of these screws in, and that's just the the metal on the radiator. The drill that drills the bits will get blunt over time and towards the end there'll be some slight imperfections and there'll be some slightly smaller holes drilled and that's what I've got here so then I've got to put a bit more effort into screwing it into the Okay. 
I settle that, I I would really like this to be moved back. I don't like this gap here. What do you reckon? I reckon that's pretty shit. What can we do? I shouldn't have screwed all eight bolts in. But hey, we get to see an example of exactly what I ta was talking about just before. Do you think that's a bit better? Yeah. A bit further back? Alright. So we'll get six out of eight of the bolts in, in this position. Okay. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Okay. Tables sticking out anywhere. All right. Okay, so when we have a micro ATX board in an ATX case, which will happen from time to time, sometimes people get a bit confused. Why would you do that? It's like, I'm not a good case just because the motherboard is a little bit small, like a smaller form factor. I'm also not going to make a customer spend an extra hundred dollars on the motherboard for no reason. So, typically, if I'm doing a micro ATX board, an ATX case, we run all these cables along the bottom behind the motherboard. So we don't have anything sticking out of 
as long as you do that, there's no problem with the micro board in a full size ATX case. It looks great. Um, not going to be a problem. The only people going to notice is people who go looking for it, who are fully aware of all that. Oh, I should have plugged this in. So we've got another fan header there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak this one down here. the heat sink there. Okay, there's our RGB plugged in there, and so there's a male header on the back of that cable. Okay. Yeah. Hey man, how you going? Good to have you with us. And that just plugs in there. Just going to use one cable tie here around all of our fans and RGB. Oh, I do definitely need one SATA, so luckily I plugged that cable in. It's for our controller, fans, and RGB. Okay, so on the home stream. Front 
panel. So that's our power and reset button. Well, I think we're only got. I think we've pretty much just got power and power LED. From what I can feel, we've only got four. Go. We have USB C. Do I have that around the wrong way? Yes, I do. Happy now. The USB C front panel connector. It's as confusing as a normal USB port. You go to plug it in, and you'll plug it in the wrong way, then you plug it in the right way, then you'll plug it in the wrong way again. This is what they call a 20 plus 4 pin cable, but the 4 pin part keeps freaking coming out. Okay, excellent. So now just a couple of extra screws on our motherboard. Okay, graphics card time. So in with this board we're using slots one and two for our graphics card. You might notice that there's what looks like three slots that are the same size. One's in silver and the others are just black. So even though they they look the same length, they're not actually the same length. Those two bottom ones are what they call X1 slots. So they're not actually connected all the way along, they're only connected just at the start of the slot. Tiny, right? And you'll see what a X16 looks like, which is what the top slot is, when we open up our graphics card. So I think I've already got this one. Well, th 
this is the board that was replacing fucking old mate's board. So yeah, there's the X16 versus the X1. So if we plugged this card into one of those black slots, it would only communicate with that many pins. So you notice there's like a bit at the start there and then a divider. Power, data. Okay, so final piece is our graphics card power. Okay, that is our PC assembled. What's that popping out? Because you suck. <laughs> I don't know. Seriously, is this is this panel like slight ever so slightly bent or something? trying to fucking s bolt down a shitload of cables or something like that and it's not I mean you saw it there's like hardly anything back there there are three little little sort of bolts that like slide in place I was trying to do the bottom one and the top popped out put emphasis on the top one and the bottom one came out so yeah, good fun. Okay, so let's see if it actually if it actually works. Cuz it's all one thing to put it together, but it's another thing to see And so right now this is this is the um this is the point in the night where you're going to know whether you're going to get be able to pick your PC up tomorrow or whether there's going to be a hold up because of some sort of warranty claim on 
on a part or something like that. So Why is this USB cable not going in? I've run over it with my chair. I've like bent the metal. So hopefully I haven't damaged the pins. Should be sweet. There we go. Nice tight fitting cable now. All right, our, our screen's on. All right. Okay, if Christine wants to share the screen, we have post completely as expected. So that's that's a good thing. That means that we're not gonna have any dramas or we're very unlikely to have any dramas. Okay. F1 to run setup. And we're gonna flash a new BIOS. So we'll go over here to our tools, Easy Flash Utility, and I've already I've already downloaded this, I think. So this is a 650M-A. Oh, look at that, it's the same. Oh, hang on, that's an, that's, that's an old version of it. Yeah, there we go, 2413. Okay. And so what this does, this updates the motherboard firmware so basically what this does is it makes sure that the motherboard is up to date with all of the latest um, CPUs, graphics cards, memory kits um, it's also just to do with like USB devices that you plug into it and stuff like that how it responds to different things because the thing is about PCs that they're, they're pretty complicated in terms of how they're how they're set up on the back end, and yeah, you're gonna end up you're gonna end up with problems. And this is one way that you can sort of deal with those problems. Although there was, you know, there sometimes, sometimes a motherboard's got so many problems that they just stop making it, they stop producing it and delete it from the system entirely. Alright, so these ASUS Wi-Fi antenna things, they're pretty crap. Um, like, I've set it up for you here, but there's no magnet on the bottom of them or anything like that. So, I would just suggest some double-sided tape or something like that. It's probably oh. the easiest way.
back me out. Bailey, leave the cat alone. He doesn't like it when you poke him with your nose. <laughs> she goes up and out, pokes him, as if to say, like, come on, do so. And he's like, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, he doesn't like it. See that? That's him getting frustrated with more shit. Just reset.
Don't give me that look, dog. This fucking dog, she like stares at me and she just like stares into my soul, eh? <laughs> and I don't even think I have a soul. <laughs> like. <laughs> Did you sell it to someone? Yeah, I think I sold it for 10 bucks. <laughs> for a pack of CDs? Yeah. <laughs> 14 year old Tim's like, I'm selling my soul. I don't need no fucking soul. <laughs> I don't know why it's taking so long to recognize um, my my USB. It's not it's not the motherboard. It's something to do with my USB drive. Yeah, it's dying. Maybe I need to remake it. It is old. Yeah, look, look how, look at, look how slow it's going. You look like about to die on you or something. I feel like it is. <laughs> Because, yeah, it definitely shouldn't take this long. It should be, like, at least six times faster than this. Jeez, go have a smoke and come back. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, it seemed like it got faster for a second there.
Oh, I yeah, know. Oh. It's it shouldn't take it really shouldn't take this long. Watching, go grab a coffee. <laughs> Maybe go have a shower. Go grab a coffee, <laughs> grab a beer, have a cigarette, have a cone, whatever you want. Just yeah, do that. A few minutes, come back. Maybe we're done. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the toilet and get a drink. Do you know what I find hilarious? What? How people think that AMD are like the good guys and Intel is like the evil guy. Sorry, what? Oh, people... Like, people think that AMD are like the good guys and Intel are like the bad guys. Oh, oh, and they're like, they're like, they're like... AMD has supported the AM4 socket for over 10 years That's because they, they care, they care about people and they, they're they not going to screw their customers over like Intel who make a new socket every they couple of years. They find any way they can. <laughs> I, I, just, I just commented this first time, I'm like, dude, seriously, AMD is like, for the CPUs, they're like 20% versus Intel's 80%. When it comes to businesses that have that sort of sh market share difference, it's a case of like 
So Intel has 80% of the chip market versus 20% for AMD. Intel's got four times the market share. They got approximately four times the resources behind that product than AMD. So I guarantee if the tables were turned and AMD had four times the budget, they'd be releasing four times as many chipsets and motherboards and stuff like that. None of these big companies are our friends, okay? These big companies, they don't care about me. I'm too small to care about. Um, they don't care about you. They don't care about anything other than their shareholders and making money, okay? This is, these are tech companies. These are cold, cold people, okay? They don't give a fuck. Whatever you hear, whenever you hear them say that they do care, they don't care, okay? I hate to burst burst anyone's bubble there, but they are just other corporations. They're no different to, you know, the Shell Oil Corporation or fucking, you know, Coca-Cola or um, Monsanto or who else is like a big company that people don't like. Um, like, I don't know, all the oil companies and stuff. Like, they're just another, all these guys... Asus and stuff. They're just other big corporate tech companies. They don't care about you any more than Mark Zuckerberg cares about you, any more than the, the team at Alphabet, aka Google, care about you. Um, yeah. I mean, when they say that they do care about you, they care about you through the guise of like making their business more profitable. But yeah, ser seriously, like, there's no, there's no, there's no good guy. There's no good guy in this equation. The good guy is you not being fooled by all the bullshit. That's, that's what you got to remember. And yeah, like, from a sales perspective, AMD is going to be more like Intel in the future because their market share is growing. As their market share grows, their research and development budget grows, and they'll start smashing out chipsets and new CPU sockets at a much faster rate, because that will continue to drive their business. Trust me, I'll, I'll, I'll make a prediction over the next 10 years. Mark my words right now, okay? As AMD gain more market share, they will spend more on R&D, and they will make more sockets, more CPUs, with very little difference, just like Intel, okay? Because these guys are, as I said, they're two halves of the same coin. The, the, the people that founded both brands all used to work together at the same company. And they got the shits with the company, and because they were like the, the tech and development team, they were just like, huh, yeah, we're, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna like, just work on bullshit we're all just going to quit and we'll start our own businesses and one of them became intel and one of them became amd so sort of you know two halves of the same coin is what i'm saying now wasn't like one started up and was like right our mission is to do everything right by the consumer we want to we want to help humanity or something like that it's not it's 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 never like that. If it is, it's only, it's only as far as like doing something that's good for humanity that's going to massively profit us. Like that's it's always how it goes. And you can say I'm a cynic and all that, but I just got ex I just got experience with big companies and shit. I know exactly I know exactly what they're like. But, you know, it's. I've worked for them. I've made money for them. Um, yeah. I know exactly what they're like at their core. Yeah, they like to say that they're that they're this and that they're that. Oh, why didn't that work? Oh, I had a folder selected. Duh.
And yeah, the thing is, the th also the thing is, Intel's going to be doing a lot of shit over the next few years, over the next five years. Um, the US government has basically poured shitloads of money into Intel, so they're not going to move out of the USA, and based on that, they're going to be getting, like, billions of dollars to, to like, work on new shit. So, the, the competition in the market right now is red hot. Um, and yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it cooling down for a while. The only, the only thing that's kind of like a little bit on the scary side is, you know, AMD's based in Taiwan. So, Taiwan officially think that they're China because they're the government that the Communist Party in China kicked out and so they both disagree on on ownership so the Chinese think that Taiwan's part of their empire and Taiwan thinks that China is is also their empire they've just been ousted by the communists so very very fucked up situation there the sort of thing that could explode very very quickly and people would take it really really far and 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 die for it taiwan's like the u.s and taiwan are very very close so they can't just they can't just easily um china can't just easily come in here send the navy out and invade Taiwan not without a heap of blowback so that's sort of the only thing that's keeping the peace right now is the fear of fear of that mainly economic blowback from it so yeah to say things are like tentative and very you know on edge there is is an understatement Oh, um, do I not have frickin' Wi-Fi drivers? Are you serious? Hey babe, can you get me, can you get me the Wi-Fi driver for that board? Sorry, the, see, yeah, the, the second support, just to be super confusing, wireless. See right here, this is the kind of, this is the kind of bullshit annoying thing that, that you'll come across if you, um, if you build your own PC, you'll set it all up and you will go to connect to the internet and you'll realize, oh, there's no... Mm -hmm. What? Which one is it? Scroll up.
went into it. And see, tonight, I don't have my regular 5G internet. We're running on NBN fixed wireless, which is like pathetic, right? It's basically dial up of the, of the 2020s, right? And so if the, the stream is like not as good quality or a little bit glitchy tonight, that's why. And yeah, normally motherboards are, are good with um, with the Ethernet, so you'll be able to connect to the internet straight away via Ethernet, even with no no drivers. And unfortunately, the NBN router is in another room, so okay. It's not. It's just really, really reflective. Yeah, yeah, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it's all built in. Oh, hang on. Yeah, you can see the you can see the five G mobile broadband there. It's connected, but the the actual connection quality instead of being hundreds of megabits per second one. it's one megabit per second so, i've tried contacting telstra who who it's through and it's just so hard to fucking deal with these people these days Okay. So what do you what do you what do you play? I'm gonna assume you play COD. So I'm installing Battle.net. I installed Steam. play Fortnite? You play any EA games? Just let me know and I'll install um, Epic Games and um, EA for you. Okay, there we go. Our RAM, our CPU, and graphics card.
Ugh, feeling those slower network speeds. Still all this crap. Yep. 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 Small ass dog. She's very small. Before the flow series and God knows who came up with that design. <laughs> ah yes. Yeah, I know. I know, bro. Those old NZXT cases, oh no. Like I get why people liked them, like the look of them, but it was just uh not good to build in. Not good for airflow, not good for like compatibility. Just not good. It's just pretty <laughs> objectively just not very good. It is shit. It is shit. Software is going to take freaking ages, so Oh, okay, yeah, so we got you've got the H5 flow here with a Ryzen 5 7600, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 6000 megahertz, CL30, all white with ATX3 cable, so Japanese capacitors and all the, all the goods inside. Um, one terabyte SSD, and it's on the Asus. Prime B650-A Wi-Fi motherboard. And so the internet here tonight is, is crap because I don't have my 5G um, mobile at the moment. It's, it's, um, I don't know what's wrong with it, but I'm only getting like a couple of megabits from it. So can't, couldn't possibly stream on that. So we're on crappy NBN fixed while uh, fi nbn fixed wireless I almost said fixed wi-fi then and it's not fixed wi-fi it's fixed wireless so yeah happy days but anyway what i'm going to do is i'm going to download reva tuna statistics server and msi afterburner and we can just run through the gaming benchmarks and stuff now like what we normally do and then we can just end the stream and then I can let all this crap just download and install like overnight and stuff like that. Because it's just going to take 
freaking ages. Normally all this stuff can download, you know, relatively quickly. But now we gotta wait for everything to sort of very slowly start to download. As you can see, it's just trickling through like a megabyte at a time. <laughs> Fortunately, it's okay for Reva Tuner. The stuff that it's downloading is not very, um, it's not very big in terms of the file size. Um, Any time after 10, I guess? I'll make it after 12 just in case there's any like freaking slowdowns with getting everything installed and stuff like that. Just to be safe. I don't want you to rock up and then, and then I'm like, oh, it's fucking still got to do this and that and blah, blah, blah. You can pick it up and then it's ready to use. That's realistically what you want. The only thing you got to do really is, um, make an account for, um, GeForce Experience, this one down here, and make an account for Windows. So say up here, sign in. Go and go and do all that. And then yeah, you can just you can just go ahead and, and use it. Okay, so let's get this set up and we can run the gaming benchmarks and sort of see how it runs. And then I'll keep I'll keep installing software on it, then I'll, um, I'll do the stress test on it, and then I guess I'll do the, I'll do the Windows 11 upgrade for you, so you don't have to download that on your end, but I'll do that tomorrow, so hopefully the, um, the internet will be fixed. Okay. Alright, so we're going to run the gaming benchmarks here. And so you can download these on your own computer, run them on your own hardware and compare. You can follow my setup process for 
MSI Afterburner and Reaver Tuner if you want to set up the on-screen display. Okay, so the stuff on the screen up the top here in green, we've got our graphics card, temperature, usage, clock speed and wattage. Down here, MEM1, that's our VRAM, usage and clock speed. Then we've got our CPU, temperature, usage, clock speed and wattage. Um, RAM here, total RAM being utilized, and this number below RAM is how many frames per second it's currently running at. So yeah, all that hardware, barely breaking a sweat. So, what's hot? 3 degrees. And the CPU there, up to 95 degrees. So, when you're looking at these numbers here that are substantially lower, even though it might seem hot to you as a human, everything's running really cool. Okay, and so that was heaven there on high with no anti-aliasing. Okay, it's been happening in the background. How are we going? <laughs>
Okay, so the next one we're going to run is called Valley, but we're going to run it on higher settings. Even if we ran it on the same settings, Valley is a more demanding benchmark than Heaven. Valley there on Ultra with max anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing kind of like smooths jagged lines and stuff. But puts extra load on the graphics card but increases the quality of the image. There it goes.
Okay. So, sorry about that interruption there. What else have I got to do? No, that's what we need. Look at, look at this one here, it's only done 7%. <laughs> oh, no, it jumped up to 11%. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like I said, these will be going on for a while. Um, but yeah, let's just have a look at these 4K numbers. And so realistically, most games that you play at 4K resolution typically PS isn't really as important and as long as you're getting you know 4k 60 frames per second that's fine for you know GT Tomb Raider or any like RTS games like City Skylines or something like that um, yeah you don't you don't really you don't really need it to to push out two hundred frames per second. Of course there's that person who's got the four K two hundred and forty hertz monitor and stuff like that, but realistically you don't you don't need it. Well, I should say the 1440p is fine. Even 1080 is fine. But I love it as like anti-gravity machine everything just falls up like floats up in the air and then falls back down nice and perfectly on the desk like totally violates mix like come on guys entropy is a thing okay it is a thing whether you like it or not a lot of people don't like it Okay. Sweet as. Oh, that's still going on. So there will still be some stuff there that needs to be installed. 
So as we can see here, if we go into Computer Management, Device Manager, we can always check and make sure all of our hardware components are installed and working properly because you'll see a, a complete list down here without any unknown devices or without any devices with a little caution asterisk on them. So these, these will be installed with Armory Crate. Once that loads, it'll let me download the um, chipset drivers and stuff. And this one here, this is just the onboard graphics on the CPU, so that's no big deal. That one, that one there, is this thing here that's downloading. The rest of that stuff's all Windows. And the other two things, yeah, like I said, that'll come from within Armory Crate. I could also go to the website and download it if I wanted to, but eh. That's all good. And then, yeah, we run a stress test on it just to make sure everything's working all right. Just so, you know, usually if something's going to fail, it fails like pretty much straight away. If not, it's not going to fail for a while. So doing a stress test is a good way to sort of weed, weed that out, make sure it's all running good before I hand it over because I ship PCs out nationwide so that that brings with it certain challenges because um, if they've got a problem then yeah it's, I can't I can't just go over and, and fix it for them like Charlie he's he's just down he's just down local town he's he's not 30 Ks yeah about that close distance for out here oh, it's not a it's 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 actually it's actually not a bad drive from from um, from Gatton out to out to where I am it's go through all of the all of the um, all of the irrigation farms and stuff like that around Atkinson's Dam and into Patrick Estate and Lowood and shit. Anyway, um, well, look, this is where we're probably going to leave it because everything's downloading super slow and I'm going to run out of things to talk about, um, probably on all subjects, let alone actually computer subjects. So, yeah, we can turn it. Look at how shiny that is, reflecting you everything. You can see Christine's PC there that we're streaming off. Yeah, it's it's very reflective. But yeah, looks the goods. Um, I'd be I'd be very happy with it. But you don't really, you don't really see it though. Oh. You got two big 140s. Alrighty, well if anyone's got any other final questions for me before I sign off, now is the chance to ask them. If not, I will be saying Oh, you know, we've been looking for that lighter for the barbecue, babe. Yeah. It was in these shorts in the pocket. <laughs> No, that's looking like that's it for the night. So look, um, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back tomorrow night. Um, but doing something a little bit different. I'm just going to be going to be moving my PC into a new case because this is something I do. I don't know. I 
get a new PC or I put my PC in a new case or something like that. Just keep it fresh. It makes me feel good. <laughs> Main thing. <laughs> no, um, taking up a bit too much room in our lounge room. It takes up a lot of room in the lounge room, and it's just in an awkward spot. So, I'm going with a slightly smaller case. The cat's gonna be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll 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 still be room for him. All right.